Larry Moore Woo! and Carlin. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He does that. He does that like that. The original story for the third film was a Haunted Castle movie. But Stephen had just finished Poltergeist, so he said, I don't want to do another Haunted Castle movie. So I said, okay. I said, what about the Holy Grail? He said, oh, you brought that up last time. I don't like that idea. You know, the Holy Grail isn't strong enough. And I said, well, give me a chance with it. I'm going to take the Haunted Castle and put it at the beginning for the teaser, and then I'll do the Holy Grail. And we did that script, but it didn't really turn out that well. With Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, I wanted to flesh out Indy's relationship with his father. And I said, here's a time we can really do a really good character study of who gave birth to this guy. I said, George, let's see, who inspired him? Let's do a father-son story. And George said, well, is that going to be conducive with a grail search? I said, well, the search for the father is the search for the Holy Grail. And if they're estranged uh, by bitterness of, of, of experience, uh, uh, you know, different ideologies or different approaches to archaeology, the father is more professorial than Indy ever was, the father's more critical of Indy. So, I basically built up this kind of relationship between Indy and his dad, and then when it came down to casting it, I said to George, there's only one person that can play Indy's father, and that's, you know, James Bond. And the original James Bond, the greatest James Bond, Sean Connery. And so we went for broke. We went after Sean, and fortunate for us in the movie, Sean said that he would do it. I was absolutely delighted, and um, I had a lot of notes, as usual, about the whole piece. and. Um, I mean, after all, if you're going to make a film with the father of Indy, uh, you really have to have some kind of eccentricities and what have you. And anyway, at first it didn't bode too well because I think George had a different idea, Lucas, of what it was about. Probably a bit more Calvin-like and uh, conservative in that way. Anyway, when we went to the meeting at Amblin with George and Stephen, it went very well. Well, I was a strong proponent of the idea of bringing Indiana Jones' father into the story and um, uh, showing some new aspects of his character that we hadn't seen in the first two films. The third film benefits greatly from uh, Sean Connery's presence, which kind of elevated everybody's game. I think it's by far the most sophisticated in many ways, and uh, it was maybe the most fun of all of them because it had uh, great locations, great physical sequences. It had a terrific leading lady, Alison Duty, with a real intriguing story to tell. The woman who had a relationship both with my father and with me, and the complications that ensued from that. And I had great fun with it. Oh. Just another day at the office. B. Mark. Indy. Yeah, yeah. I told Stephen, what if we started out with him as a little boy? Indiana. Indiana. Shh. Just let us see if we can work this out. You know, I think it might be an interesting idea, and it gives the whole thing so much more depth. So he said, well, okay, okay. That cross is an important artifact. It belongs in a museum. I was interested in playing a young indie and uh, kind of had some insight on Harrison's uh, way about him, uh, being that I worked with him on Mosquito Coast. And uh, while doing Mosquito Coast, I, I kept a close eye on Harrison and I noticed some of his traits. And, you know, when he would turn around, I would uh, sometimes mimic him and, and get a few laughs. And How about this? That's good, that's good. I felt, you know, close to it. I felt I could do it. Give me that moment, yeah, give me that moment of humiliation. And then go. And then go, right, go fast, right, good, that's lovely. Well, River, you know, I love River's work, especially when he was in Stand By Me. And, and I think Harrison actually was the one that suggested River. He said to me, the guy that looks most like me when I was that age is this actor named River Phoenix. And I, th I believe that's a Harrison Ford idea because he played Harrison's son in, in Mosquito Coast. And I, I met River and thought he was great and cast him. Right, that's right, exactly, that's good. I wouldn't do that, but I, I like when it wraps around you. Wrap it around you again, I like that. The movie has chosen to pick young Indy up at a certain point in his life where he experiences many different things which are very significant and forever change him, forever. And basically he'll never be the same. For instance. Oh my God. You see how he gets this phobia for snakes. Ah! 
and how he, uh, how he learns how to use a whip. And he cracks that whip. And in the process of doing so, he goes, voila poo, and the very end cuts him. And there you have the scar. We thought it would really be fun to show how Indiana Jones got the scar on his chin, because in real life, Harrison Ford has a scar on his chin already. Oh, I had a car crash when I was about 22 years old, 23 years old. I ran a car off a road and into a telephone pole. Yeah, well, the second one is, 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 is the one where it flies back in the face. You see it pretty well. We, we River did it before yeah. with the felt Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, I just wanted to bring back the spirit of the original Raiders and have some fun. I wanted to bring the cast back that I had missed in Temple of Doom, so then Elliot came back and he was in a key role and bringing back uh, Sala and, and just bringing the spirit of what got us so pregnant with the series originally in 1980. How long have I been looking for that? All your life? In a way, I was rather the sort of father figure in the first one. And then I was real fathers turned up. My role in that direction has been superseded. So uh, Steven Spielberg has turned him, I'm very glad, into a sort of figure of fun who's got three left feet when he's outside his own environment. And uh, he never stops doing the most terrible things at the wrong moment. And it's great fun. There's a lot, quite a lot of comedy involved. Does anyone here understand a word I'm saying? My name is Donovan. Walter Donovan. I know who you are, Mr. Donovan. I suppose it was my friendship with my next door neighbor, Robert Watts, who's the executive producer, as you know, um, that pulled me into this, this whole genre, really. Um, and indeed, he did Star Wars, the first Star Wars. And this quite small part came up in Empire Strikes Back. And I went to meet them, and, and I got it. And so when Indiana Jones came along, there was the part of the sergeant, the German sergeant, for which I was eminently suitable. And I went up to be interviewed for it, and I didn't get it. And the next day, my agent rang and said, well, they want you to go along for Walter Donovan. I said, well, what, you mean the main villain? He said, yeah, he's American, don't forget he's American. So I did this terrible phony interview with a ghastly American accent. <laughs> it was awful. And I got it. I couldn't believe it. Uh, it's one of the most happy experiences of my 